Hey guys, so I wanted to uh, I wanted to chat to you about um, Blutner and tell you the backstory of Blutner and how that came about. Um, very powerful story for me and uh, really dear to me. When uh, I first started, I had a look at Piano Book and what they were starting there, and and it uh, it was such a cool idea and i had this little lingering idea to to sample something cool uh, just for fun you know um and then in 2019 i think it was 2019 um my mum died she had uh, motor neuron disease and we were sitting by her bedside on the pretty much the night she died um, a few hours before she died and we were just sitting there with her and she couldn't speak at this point um those of you who know ALS it's a it's it's a terrible flipping disease and she couldn't talk at this point but she was completely still there she was completely still in herself and and completely with it and um she motioned like this she wanted to hear music but none of the none of the CD players worked and the radios were all busted. I don't know what was going on. It was a, such a strange night, but her bed was literally right next to this beautiful Blutner piano that we've had in our family since since I was since I was born. I think I was one years old when when my dad bought it. Um, so we've that's all. That's the only piano I've known you know, and uh, such an incredible, beautiful piano. Um, and I wanted to play for her, but I'm, I'm, I'm not a great uh, pianist by any means, you know. I know, I know my way around it, but I, I can't really play anything specific. So, and it's strange, I had this feeling like I wanted to, I wanted to give that to her, but this other feeling in me that was but crippled in you know she she had a way of being quite critical uh critical of of uh of certain things and and there was a part of me that that wasn't open to to putting that there the worst thing for me would have been to start playing something and for her to shut it down you know the thought of it is also crazy because i'm sure she would have loved it i, I don't know anyways she passed away that night and um, I saw the piano in the days that followed. Uh, we had, you know, the whole Corona virus lockdown, which started probably a week after that. And we were locked down in this house where she, where she died. And so I had some time to study the piano and I discovered that it was, it's got a crack in the frame and it's, sort of on its way out in a way i mean it's it's over 100 years old and um so i decided let me before i move the piano to cape town which is about 500 kilometers from from her house uh, before i move it let me take a snapshot of it so that's why i decided to sample it and i sampled it in in the most intimate detail that that i could Every single note, uh, five velocity layers. It's got a sustain pedal and it's got a damper or, or a soft pedal, um, uh, una corda pedal. Um, and I actually wanted to try and capture this piano in a, in a way that, that I remember playing it, you know, like sitting in front of the piano and, and hearing the keys and, and hearing that sound. So I put some microphones right in front of the piano sort of opened the op opened the sort of front of the piano and, and and put it there it's a baby grand piano and uh maybe parlor grand is maybe a better description it's a styles blutner style six and then i put some mics in the you know right above the strings as one would and those are the two positions i used and i and i did this and it took me i think a total of 25 hours if i calculate everything it was about four or five days nights because i was recording at night um yeah an intimate intimate 
intimate time for me. You know, the piano now at this stage had been moved to exactly where her bed was when she died. Um, and, you know, spending these nights at the piano, um, you know, midnight, you know, the four o'clock in the morning and... I found myself falling into these deep trance places, uh, like sort of a liminal place where, you know, I'm, I'm holding the note for 30 seconds at a time. And uh, by day three, I'm literally falling asleep for for a few seconds at a time. And then I had a had an audio prompt saying, OK, you know, next note or whatever it was and uh so i'd sort of wake up and then i'd have a click four beats and then hit the note again then fall back into the liminal space and that was an incredible time for me so so rich and so deep you know to almost be playing yeah i can't really describe it it was just um I've said it many times that this project was a catharsis for me and it absolutely was from that all the way through to the development of the sampler, learning KSP, learning how to program, uh, you know, a, a contact instrument. And it took me into an incredibly deep place. It was an outworking of a lot of pain, a lot of pain. And what the project took me eight months in total, I think. And at the end of that, my family, everyone will, you know, they'll, they'll testify that I'm a different person after, after the project, where I was definitely grieving before. I had worked out a lot of, lot of the pain into this project. It's an artwork for me. For me, it's an artwork, you know. Um, it's, an, it's a working out of human pain into into a physical object this is a virtual object right but that's what art is i think intrinsically so so this piano sampler gives me an incredible amount of peace and joy knowing that uh you're enjoying it knowing that it it is a great uh product knowing that it it you know for better or worse this piano just is is magical for me now you know and um knowing also that i found a a healing at the same time in inside the space um was a revelation to me was a revelation to me so i just wanted to say that and put that down and um, um i hope that you find something in in what i've said and if you dealing with you know you know some deep pain and you don't know what to do with it find something to make find something to make because i think there's a secret there I think we as humans love to make things and somehow the most amazing things come out of our pain and it's, I think, magical. So anyway, I'm Richard Foskeda and I hope to uh, inspire you and possibly chat to you again. Cheers.